The truth is that um, even now, we don't know, anaesthetists don't really know precisely what's going on when a general anaesthetic is given. Uh, we don't know exactly what's going on in the brain. We have some good guesses and with increasing advances in technology such as um, functional MRI scans and so on, we're learning more about the actions of anaesthetics, but by and large, they remain really quite mysterious. It's tempting to think, and I think that many people have made this mistake, that the general anaesthetic state or the unconsciousness that's associated with general anaesthesia is an all or nothing phenomenon. Either you're asleep, unconscious, and anaesthetized, or you're not, and you're awake. The truth is that there's a whole gradation of states between the two extremes. And very commonly, what we're investigating is states between what you might call oblivion and full consciousness. And those states between are far more common in operating theatres than many realize. And when I say many, I'm including anaesthetists as well. One of the areas that I'm conducting research in, Ian and I are conducting research in, is looking at what can be happening in terms of the brain and consciousness and cognitive activity in those between consciousness states. And the possibility that patients can experience things during an operation and then afterwards have no conscious recall of that fact but nevertheless, that experience has psychological effects, particularly emotional effects. One of the interesting things about the medical literature in this area is that there's a whole swathe of intriguing case studies in which patients have had no conscious or explicit memory for an operation, but suddenly after that operation, they developed a psychological problem. And when you go back and have a look at the operation and look at the anaesthetic notes, there appears to be circumstantial evidence that the patient actually may not have been properly anaesthetized and at the best was actually very lightly anaesthetized. So what we're arguing is that if patients are in this lighter state of anaesthetic, they may be vulnerable to processing certain parts of the information that's going on in, in the operating theater and in particular processing emotion such that that emotion and particularly trauma could appear after they've had the operation without them having any conscious recollection of the operation. 